It's a great day to be playing piano. Today, Ted and I are diving deep into the Yamaha U1 and the Steinway 1098. Stick around. Hi, this is Ted with Alamo Music Center in downtown San Antonio, Texas. I'm Patrick Moore. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channels, check out our other videos, sign up for notifications, like our videos, leave us comments. We appreciate your support and we love to interact with you. Ted, this is exciting because in the eyes of a lot of consumers, these are the two brands that are the most recognized in the piano world. Um, Steinway, you know, a very rich history Absolutely. of being an American company with a many American manufacturing. Um, many will say, oh, this is, you have to own a Steinway. This is the best piano that's around. Yamaha, um, a relatively, I guess, younger company, but still been around for over a hundred plus years. Plus years. Um, but uh, Yamaha, very, you know, well spoken of, especially in the modern era as, hey, it's hard to beat the value of a Yamaha. Um, and so in your experience, how many of each of these models have you played in your life? I have played more U1s than probably any other upright. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm not going to talk about grants, but I've also played a lot of those Baldwin 243 uprights, which is they have one or they have a couple models that are in here but the one that i really like from baldwin is that six thousand that's the big oh, the big tall one the big tall one mm -hmm. those are hard to find those are great pianos but the 1098s how many steinway 1098s have you played? i have not well i didn't go to an all steinway school see mm -hmm. that's part of it at an all steinway school you're going to have a crux of those pianos are going to be 1098s and it's because a lot of the accompanists and a lot of the people that are memorizing literature that's that's like a workout piano that's mm -hmm. like their top of the line not their top of the line uh, upright but it is their most used and most popular upright yeah and so right off the bat these aren't apples to apples the, it's not and it's hard to compare a, a, a yamaha u1 to a steinway 1098 from player to player and the comparison really is player to player it's whatever you like whatever you play and i think we're and, both going to play them so that we... yeah we're both going to play them but but the idea of of um player to player is that some people will have nothing but steinway piano experiences and for them going to a yamaha piano is like oh what is it it's uh, i've never been around this mm -hmm. and then there are other people that are in the opposite category to where they've only played on uh yamaha pianos and only occasionally come across a steinway and uh, it all depends on the school, the institution, and a lot of times the, the venue or the gig. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of gigs, if you go there and they have an upright piano, um, the odds are the dice though, it's going to be a Yamaha and mm -hmm. probably a U1 or a U3. Yeah. But um, a lot of times you do encounter like the older, more traditional type of piano purchases were always American made. Mm -hmm. And that would always put Steinway at the top of the list. It's an interesting piano though, because if you go online and you're reading about, it's a 45 inch piano is what they call it, but it's actually 46 and a half inch. And uh, there's a couple of construction things to it that, are, that make that particular piano special. They put their, their pin block and their seal and their action and all those uh, patented parts that they have. And they tell you the year that they achieved the patent. So historically, they tell you what you're getting in it. And that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be a great piano. And uh, I've read a, on a lot of the technician pages, and there's a lot of technicians that complain about the 1098 as a piano. And uh, some of the things they talk about are the pressure bar and how hard it is to tune. And Steinway claims all Steinway pianos are hard to tune, but once they're in tune, they'll hold their tune Mm -hmm. perfectly and all that and that's any manufacturer is going to say that and it is true it, it, it's there there seem to be a number of tuners that will not service those pianos or do tech work on them and because they're just too hard to tune and a lot of that boils down to they're not charging enough for the work they have to put into it and so a lot of times they just won't do it yeah and on, I, can, I think on the flip side Yamaha U1 has been synonymous with kind of easy to tech um, and, and so when you ask a technician, they're definitely looking at it from a different lens than a player, obviously. They're always going to mention Yamaha first because those are probably the pianos that they encounter more frequently and mm -hmm. more often than any other brand. And I'm not saying that because Yamaha outsells Steinway. I'm saying that because, well, the Steinways cost a little bit more and the market 
doesn't have as many buyers that are willing to throw down what those pianos cost. Yeah, and so it's, it's interesting because nowadays you see a lot of 1098s available in a similar price range of a Yamaha U1. You know, a, a, either a, a gently used Yamaha U1 or sometimes like some of the refurbished, rebuilt ones, they have gone up in price. And the 1098 also kind of hovers around the same price. But uh, uh, like you said, there's a, a little bit of a size difference. The, the, the Steinway 1098 is going to be 46 and a half inches. Um, it's got all, all uh, birch and all maple f solid frame, you know, solid spruce uh, soundboard, uh, just a really kind of well-constructed instrument. Uh, and the Yamaha U1, again, is, is in a lot of teachers' studios and a lot of universities, uh, and it's really kind of sought after because of it's, it's a U1, and it's been a U1 since 1960 when they first came out with this, the U1. So you see a lot of, it's probably, you know, 5 to 10 to 1, of the 1098. Oh, at least. And I'm sure that most piano manufacturers worldwide are going to have to agree on one thing, and that is that the, the Yamaha U1 is probably the most prevalent piano in the piano world. Well, and, and it, I think it, it's, it says something that they've kept the same name. You know, a lot of manufacturers, we talk about Kawhi a lot, they've changed what their, what their K-series is. So the K3 turned to the K300, um, and, uh, you know, the USTs turned to the STs eventually. Right. So, so there is, these manufacturers usually are, are changing model numbers, changing names, and, you know, changing the design a little bit. A U1, you can look as far back as 1960. A 1098 also, you can look as far back as 1950 right. and find examples of these very well-built, sought-after instruments, which I think speaks to, to the, uh, you know, the worth of what, what it is and what you can expect from it. Um, so let's, let's play them, let's listen to them because these do have very different uh, tone profiles. Um, and so, sure. um, so this Yamaha that we're gonna be playing uh, has been uh, basically brought into new conditions. Um, it's one of the ones that's, that's been kind of refurbished. Uh, the serial number is officially gonna date it probably back to like the 70s, um, but it plays very well, um, sounds very good and, and almost plays like a new piano. The Steinway is a 1999. Um, so, uh, you know, in the age of pianos, a, a relatively young, instrument um, and so let, let's listen to the, the sound profiles of both of those and then we'll come back and talk about a couple more of the differences between the two.
Patrick, in, in defense, I, I will say that the Steinway was not tuned as well as the U1. And there's no one to blame for that but me because I'm the last guy to tune that piano. And it was last week I tuned it. And uh, it, it is a lot like what the technicians say. It is a, more problematic than tuning a regular piano. It's a little bit harder. It's a little bit harder. It requires more patience. And it's harder to get that pin right where you mm -hmm. need it. And sometimes it's frustrating because it seems like it wants to go everywhere except where you need it to go. Mm -hmm. And uh, aside from that, uh, some of the comments about the pressure bar and stuff like that, unless you're tuning it, it doesn't mean anything to you. Yeah, as a player, it's, it's, it's really a, kind As of a, a player, I, I don't know how to explain it, but there's something. And I, I always attribute it to 100% American lumber in the Steinway piano. From mm -hmm. the frame, from the back post, it's, it's American trees. Yeah. And that is the first recorded sound of a piano that most people got really comfortable with. And, you know, all through the early days of recording and wax recordings and vinyl recordings and peeling off plastic and then radio days and down the tape and then through our record and CD businesses that we've had in the last, you know, 95 years. Mm -hmm. uh, Steinway is pretty much the sound that that we're accustomed to that yeah. people are accustomed to to hearing. And when you sit down and you play it, your first thinking is. Man, but then the more you play it, it starts drawing you in, even if it's out of tune. It's, got, it's, it's it had not a little tuned bit of, anywhere near as well as the U1. So we both played it. I, I, I feel like there was a little bit of a charm to the Steinway. And I, I don't know how much of that's psychological. And, you know, I, I think it's impossible to disconnect. You know, maybe if you're wearing a blindfold, disconnect what you're playing well, to what. Well, anytime you start doubting yourself, it's kind mm -hmm. of like our conversation between the satinwood grand pianos and the polished, the high polished pianos, because... One of them's coated in a polyurethane plastic, and the other one is not. Mm -hmm. and, and sound and so this sounds going to act differently. It, yeah, uh, with the, and it with seemed the, like it's psychological, or is this like a? But no, it it is true because on on a whole, everyone we get in here that satin people like them mm -hmm. if they like a more mellower, rounder sounding. Piano. But they're also visually attracted sometimes <coughs> to to one or the other, and and you know both of these pianos played great. I would say as far as an action goes, I really enjoyed the Yamaha's kind of. It felt a little bit more tighter and secure. Yeah, it felt and and something that I'm very accustomed to playing is the Yamaha. I've played a lot of Yamaha U1s, a lot of the Yamaha uprights, um, and Yamaha is definitely known as an upright player. Steinway has the name, but again, uprights usually aren't the forte that people say, "Hey, <coughs> oh, go look for a Steinway upright." Usually, absolutely, they're looking for a grand. And so I think it's going to be interesting. We're going to do a product review of. The Steinway 1098 versus, I think, a Steinway S, one of the baby grands, maybe one of the ones that we've got that's a little bit nicer. And and I think it would be an interesting demonstration of how different the baby grand it's Steinway... It's not really fair to say it's a little bit nicer because it is a fully remanufactured, fully refurbished 1927, which is at their peak. Mm -hmm. The Roaring 20s. You're talking about the Steinway grand. The Steinway grand that, that, that we're going to put in the next video. I mean, you're talking about a piano that at its time... A country was booming. And oh, people yeah. were booming. It was better than the Wolf of Wall Street days. And so whoever bought that piano, that was a real pleasure and a treat in their life to get that piano. Well, let's not, get, let's not get ahead of ourselves. So, no, not at all. I do have some lovely things to say about the, the U1s. And I have played probably five times as many U1s as I have 1098s and Steinways. And almost every single one of them, there's something to like about every single one of the pianos. Mm -hmm. um, the, the action is always consistent. You kind of know what you're getting when you get a U1. And so it's kind of like, is this one that's beat up and worn out? Has it been played, you know, three decades through by, you know, piano students at, at a university? Or is it, uh, you know, relatively new? Has it been refurbished? Uh, is it gently worn? Those kind of things, they all come into play. And that's kind of what a player looks at when you walk up to a piano and you start playing like, how beat up is this thing? And on a Steinway, that's always the first rule. How beat up is this thing? Yeah. Because you know, anyone that comes across a Steinway is like, man, this I haven't seen one of these before. And they play the hell out of them. Yeah. And I don't blame them because there's well, something attractive. Well, if you spend that much on them. one too, why wouldn't you well, play Well, that's it the too? other thing too. And I, I think there's there's that psychological, you're going to play by guilt because we spent all this money on this instrument. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to guilt you into being a great pianist. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it's, it's interesting, especially to feel the differences between these with the Steinway being a 1999 and, and really has... I, I thought it had a sweet characteristic about it, a little bit more mellow, a little bit more 
It's, it's just, it just fit well with, with kind of playing it. I, I had it, I enjoyed it. And the Yamaha also very precise, very, um, you know, to the, to the point. It almost feels like you know what you're what to expect and what's right. going to come back to you. Um, if you've owned a Steinway upright, if you've owned a Yamaha upright, if you've played both extensively, uh, please leave comments because this is, you know, we love making content like this because it's, you know, it's, it's more, uh, you know, I don't know. It's it's not based in science. This is based in you know the feeling of a player. This is based in uh, ex personal experience. Um, and I know that people who are looking to spend money, uh, you know, this isn't a small amount of money on a, on an instrument. Want to do thorough research and hear people's opinions. And uh, and you know this is what we're doing here today. We're we're presenting two pianos that we have, and we really enjoy both of them. Um, but if you've if you've owned either of these or played them, please leave comments so others can can uh, you know hear your perspective. Um, maybe your expertise and and give us a story of why you like one or the other, um, or maybe from an investment standpoint, which one's a safer investment. Uh, these are all helpful things that uh, that would you know help people on their piano journey. The other thing, before we shot this video, I went online to a couple of uh, piano dealers and some uh, piano sites, and, and I noticed it was kind of shocking because I haven't shopped uprights in a long time, but I came across some some names in Upright that were kind of fascinating. Bechstein, Bosendorfer, and there were a few others where they were well over $50,000 for an mm -hmm. Upright piano. And that's something that I had never really thought about. If I had 50 grand, would I go spend it on an Upright piano? And then what do those things sound and play like? So if there's anyone out there that has a premier Upright piano, like a Bechstein yeah, let or us a know. Bosendorfer, that's upward of 40, 60, or 70,000, uh, there's another Mason that was out there yeah. as well. Yeah, no, they're very cool. Well, it's thank you. Extremely expensive pianos. Oh, and, yeah. And they're all, they have their root in the U1 and in the 1098 because that's where most of the players that are going to advance to one of those high-end instruments We'll have at one time played through these. Yeah, and, and just incredible, you know, staples of the piano industry. Thank you guys for watching. Again, uh, this is the Yamaha U1 versus the Steinway 1098. Make sure you're subscribed because we will be comparing the Steinway 1098 to a Steinway S, Baby Grand versus an Upright, and kind of hearing the difference in tone and profile of two Steinways that, you know, are incredible instruments. Um, but make sure you're subscribed so you can check out that video. Thank you guys for watching.